Welcome back to the Roadside Dons channel. In today's video, we visit the capital of Portugal. We arrive to Lisbon from the Azores, where we will spend two days. If you missed the nine-part mini-series from the Azores, don't forget to check out that videos as well and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. The cheapest and easiest way to get into the city from the airport is by metro, which also has a station at the airport. The red metro line takes you directly to the city center. To buy a ticket, you first need a Viva by a gem card, which you can easily buy from the ticket machine at the airport metro station, then you have to top it up with the price of the ticket. A trip costs 1 euro and 50 cents, but it is also possible to buy a day ticket for 6 euros and 60 cents. This means that you can get into the city from the airport for as little as 2 euros. It's pretty cheap, isn't it? We booked a room in a hostel on the edge of the city center for one night. We arrive hungry, so after unloading our baggage at the hotel, we sit down in an Italian restaurant. Today we walk from the Avenida de Liberdade to the Praca do Comercio Square on the beach, from there we go to Lisbon's Graffiti Street, Caiscas, and then back to the accommodation. Lisbon is the largest city in Portugal. It is located in the western part of the country, on the coast of the Atlantic Ocean, at the mouth of the Tagus. Like Rome, the historic districts were built on the city's seven hills. Marquis of Pombal Square is an important traffic junction in the city. It is located between Avenida de Liberdade and Eduardo 7 Park, in the Santo Antonio district. Its name refers to Sebastião José de Carvalho e Melo, first Marquis of Pombal and 18th century Prime Minister of Portugal. In the middle of the roundabout, you can see the monument erected in his honor. At the top is a bronze statue of the Marquis, next to him is a lion, a symbol of power. The pedestal is surrounded by several allegorical figures. Walking along Avenida de Liberdade, you can see several statues. Antonio Feliciano de Castillo was a poet and prose writer, one of the great figures of romantic literature. Rosa Araujo was the mayor of Lisbon in the 19th century. This monument depicts a bust of him with a topless female figure on a pedestal holding a bouquet of flowers in one hand and placing another at the base of the bust with the other. This war memorial pays tribute to the Portuguese dead of the First World War. When everyone hears the name Lisbon, the first thing that comes to mind is the little retro trams. 
We couldn't wait to catch a glimpse of one, and we didn't have to wait long. The city's first service was a horse-drawn train in 1873. The first real tram started its journey in 1901. At its peak, the network consisted of 24 lines, but today only six remain, on which both modern and old nostalgia trams running. Now you can see the bust of writer, journalist, poet and politician Manuel Pinheiro Chagas. Below it is a figure from his most famous work, a Morgadinha de Valflor. The Monument of the Restorers commemorates the War of Independence that began in 1640, fought by the Portuguese against Spain. On the Restorador's Square we come across an interesting statue. The Pavers Monument commemorates the workers of Lisbon who make the sidewalks we walk on. The work depicts the sculptures of two men, one of whom is cutting a stone, while his assistant stands over him with a stone hammer. King Pedro IV Square, better known as the Rocio, has been one of the most beautiful squares in the city since the Middle Ages. It used to be the site of popular uprisings, celebrations, bullfights and executions, and today it is a popular meeting place for Lisbon residents and tourists. The military king, Pedro IV's monument can be seen in the center of the square. At the bottom of the column, the four female figures symbolize the various qualities of the king, justice, wisdom, strength, and temperance. Some of the cafes and shops in the square date from the 18th century, such as Café Nicola, where the poet Manuel Maria Barbosa du Bocage used to meet his friends. In the 19th century, the area was visited only by Lisbon's high society and today it is a popular public area. There is one identical fountain at both ends of the square. The National Theater Dona Maria II was founded in 1842. It replaced the old Estas Palace, which was the seat of the Portuguese Inquisition. At the top of the theater's facade is a statue of the Portuguese playwright Gil Vicente, the father of the country's theater. To the left of the theater you can see the Rocio Railway Station. Trains to Sintra depart from this station. The promenade at the top of the 45-meter high Santa Justa elevator offers an incredible view of the city of Lisbon.
The Rua Augusta Triumphal Arch leads from the Praca do Comercio Square to the Rua Augusta Boulevard. It was originally designed as a bell tower, but was later shaped into an arch. The arch is decorated with columns and statues that reflect the glory of Portugal's capital. Stairs and elevators lead to the top, where you can enjoy a great view of the city. The Praca do Comercio is the city's most important square, built on the site where the old royal palace stood before the 1755 earthquake destroyed it. The southern end of the square overlooks the Tagus River. When the square was first built, merchant ships unloaded their goods directly in this square, as it was considered the gateway to Lisbon. The bronze equestrian statue of Joseph I was designed in 1775. He was king of Portugal at the time of the Great Earthquake, which almost completely destroyed the city. The marble steps of the Cais das Colunas Pier were once the grand entrance to the city through which heads of state and other high-ranking visitors arrived. It got its name from the two columns visible on the side of the main stairs. These were part of the city's reconstruction plan after the 1755 earthquake. The two pillars represent wisdom and devotion and are replicas of those believed to have been in Solomon's temple. Continuing along the Ribera das Nas, we can observe interesting stone figures by the shore. These are the works of the university student of German origin who came to Lisbon through the Erasmus program. The stones brought to life create an effect as if a people had emerged from the rocks. Sometimes the structures last only a few seconds before collapsing. The artist time to time have to start all over again, but the he has great patience and constantly rebuilds his works.
On the Kaisgust there is a lot of graffiti, but some of it are just scrawls. In the middle of the Roque Gamero garden stands a stone statue in honor of the painter Alfredo Roque Gamero. Nearby is a statue of Duke of Tercera, a Portuguese military officer, statesman and prime minister of Portugal. There is a bronze statue of the lottery seller on Largo Trindade Qualo. It was inaugurated on 18th of November, 1987, the day the National Lottery celebrated its 204th anniversary. The Miraduro de São Pedro de Alcântara is one of Lisbon's largest and most iconic viewpoints, offering panoramic views of the city center, including St. George's Castle. It is located in a beautiful and well-kept garden, decorated with fountains and statues. Today we will walk to St. George's Castle and get to know the old town of Lisbon. We start again from Avenida de Liberdade, where we occasionally stop to drink a little refreshment, because it is very hot. We arrive in the old town of Lisbon, in the beautiful Alfama district. The Roman Catholic Church of St. Anthony is dedicated to St. Anthony of Padua. According to tradition, a family house stood on the site of the church, where the saint was born in 1195. The house was converted into a church in the 15th century, which was rebuilt and remodeled several times. The Baroque Rococo-style church that can be seen today dates from the 18th century. The Saint de Lisboa, or Saint Mary's Cathedral, is a Roman Catholic cathedral. Built in the 12th century, it survived several earthquakes. It was renovated several times, so different architectural styles were mixed, but it is predominantly Romanesque. Its central element is the rose window. If you want to see it from the inside, you have to pay an entrance fee. Alfama is Lisbon's oldest district, which was built on the slopes of the Lisbon Castle Hill and extends to the Tagus River. Its name is of Arabic origin, Alhama, which means fountain, bath. There are many historical sites to see here, as well as father bars and restaurants. During the Moorish rule, in the 8th century, this part of the city was the city itself, which later expanded to the west, forming today's Baixa district. Alfama was the residence of fishermen and poorer people, and this is predominantly the case even today. Thank 
The Miradouro de Santa Luzia is the most romantic viewpoint in the city. In this beautiful landscape place, decorated with flowers and fountains, we can look down on the city and the Tagus River from a picturesque setting. A few meters away, there is another viewpoint, the Miraduro das Portas do Sol, from where you can see perhaps one of the most beautiful views of the Alfama district. A statue of St. Vincent greets the visitors, holding the symbol of Lisbon, the ship with the two ravens. Opposite is the Ajurara Palace, an 18th-century aristocratic residence that now houses the Museum of Decorative Arts. The name of the viewpoint means Sun Gate, which suggests that it is the best place to watch the sunrise. arrive at the castle. The entrance fee is not expensive, but due to lack of time, we have to skip this for now, so we decide to walk a little bit more in the Alfama district.
This beautiful graffiti wall is located on Escadinhas de São Cristóvão. The title of the artwork is Fadu Vadio, which is a tribute to Fadu, Lisbon's iconic music. Symbols and figures from the history of Fadu were depicted on the walls. Of course, Lisbon offers much more, that's all we had time for, we hope you had fun. Now we say goodbye to Portugal and fly back to England, but stay tuned because we'll be back soon with the next video. We want to show you many more beautiful places. Thank you for your attention and have a good day.